again. It was kind of chill and messing around, but uh, we're going to get on the interstate. I feel like riding out a little bit on this interstate. And I uh, just figured I'd bring y'all along for the ride. Man, got a good merge spot. Always look back like a lot before I come down. So when I actually get here, I have a plan on merging and a spot that uh, I already fit into. That's always generally my strategy it comes from driving bigger vehicles and trailers and stuff like that. Um, planning ahead is much more important than trying to react at the last minute. It's like uh, if you plan ahead, everything gets a lot simpler. That's like I'm looking uh, well past the, uh, the truck or whatever. I'm kind of in his, uh, not in his blind spot. But I'm just going to hang out here until this car gets clear. That way the truck has room. And then once the car gets clear, then uh, I'll slide on by. That way uh, I'm not stuck uh, by the truck. Cause, uh, trucks are kind of dangerous to bikes. You know, you have a tire blowout. That could do some damage to your bike or knock you off or whatever the case may be. Yeah, but I'm just sitting here getting some uh, fresh air. Enjoying the little bit of riding while the weather's like fairly decent. It's like probably what? 60, 65 out here. Oh well, warmest day of the week, so it'd be a shame to waste it by uh, being in a car or uh, inside, just going to work without getting out and getting and enjoying the air. So uh, I'm out here. I uh, had a little oil leak. I worked on that. Hopefully that's uh, taken care of. Nothing major, just like a little seepage um, around one of the hoses on the oil cooler. Um, it's been hit or miss whether it leaks or not, like, I mean, I suspect just because uh, the higher RPMs push a lot of oil through that hose, it, uh, it's, uh, and I get the bike's, uh, 20, 20, so it's like four years old now, so I already replaced one of the hoses, I, I, uh, may need to replace the other one, so I, was, I just took it apart this morning to look at it and, uh, see what was actually going on and I thought it was leaking at the top and it looks like it was uh, seeping off at the bottom and uh, getting blown up just a little bit from uh, the motor and the hot air and stuff so like, I just cleaned that whole front uh, oil cooler area off real good got it nice and clean like, it wasn't bad it was just had a little bit of road grime and uh, a little bit of oil you know just general maintenance you know, things you keep an eye on on these bikes. That's one of the things I usually look at. I've seen a lot of the little oil clues get dinged or knocked or whatever. So, uh, this kind of is what it is. They're, they're not really in a great position. Um, and uh, it's kind of a shame, but, you know, where else are you really going to put it on a factory bike or a factory style bike? They got relocation kits and all this other stuff, but I was like, I got an upgraded one with the, the Harley fan on it, and it seems to do pretty good. At least, I mean, the bike doesn't get hot. I haven't had, I don't see, uh, like, the oil broke down like uh, it was before I added that. Like, when you change the oil, I always run a little bit across my finger and check the color, the feel. Um, like I said, oil's really worn. You can feel that. And, uh, you know, uh, since I use synthetic, it seems to hold up to the heat a lot better. It's like, uh, like the older model bikes, like, uh, some of the older twin cams, the Evo, and I just run, like, regular non-synthetic oil in it. That's recommended for them. But for the M8, it's definitely synthetic or semi-synthetic. And, uh, you know, to change your oil, they say uh, normal service intervals, 5,000 miles. Uh, I, I 
Yeah, I usually try to get it a little bit before then. Sometimes I'll let it go out to 5,000 if I haven't been abusing the bike. Like if I'm just riding around like this most of the time, I'll let it run out to the service interval. But it's like if I race it or um, I know I abused it for a weekend or two, I'll go ahead and change it to like 25, 3,000 just to, you know, inspect it, see how it's doing. And um, like I'll also pull the dipstick out and just get a little oil sample to see what it looks like see how it's wearing stuff like that's uh it's not it's something you necessarily have to do but um you know information is what uh runs the world and uh you know any information you have on your bike condition is good in my opinion you know it's not gonna it's not something that's gonna hurt you or inconvenience you if you know what i mean but uh, it's just one of those things that like, I like to keep an eye on. I know most people don't. And some people like check the oil like every time they get gas. Yeah, I don't do that. It just uh, maybe once or twice a month I'll check it. I probably should check it more often, but you know I just kind of keep an eye on it. You'll if, if you uh, ride enough, you'll really have a good understanding of what's going on and uh, what you're actually looking at as far as um, your oil wear. Your neat thing about these M8 motors is they got uh, magnetic drain plugs on all three uh, holes. So, um, like I said, always check the transmission, make sure there's not too much metal or shavings in there. And then, um, same thing with the motor. Like, my motor's been extremely clean since the last time I've had it rebuilt. So, I haven't seen like any debris anywhere. Um, and then uh, transmission, you always see like just a little bit of wear just because you got so much surface area rubbing and mating. So um, I like to run heavy duty gear oil in it or heavy duty transmission fluid. You know, it's really like 85, 140 or 90, 140 or anything like that. Um, seems to really help these uh, transmissions uh, hold up, especially when you're throwing more power at it. That's because uh, I don't know if you can see, but I got 64,000 miles on the uh, the bike, um, and the transmission's still the original one that came from the factory. Never been taken out, never touched it. Um, I used to do uh, the Sin 3, uh, three hole, all 2050, and since then it's like I've changed it up. I mean, it works for the most part, but like uh, the transmission, like I got some clunky shifts after a while, and uh, the Sin 3 is a thinner oil, and it seems to break down under the heat and the load a lot quicker. So I mean, they say for uh, your transmission, I think the interval is like 10,000 miles, or I just go ahead and change them all at 5,000. Uh, sometimes I'll change the engine sooner. I don't necessarily do them all at once. Like, I mean, the transmission doesn't need as much servicing. The primary doesn't need as much servicing. But, um, you know, it's always good to just kind of uh, set up your service plan. And so usually I'll go and let the primary go for about 8 to 10 transmission. And I'll usually go at 5. And then um, motor oil is either like 25, 3,000. I might change it to 25 and just do the motor oil. They leave everything else still about five. Um, I say you just kind of got to figure out what works, but um, you don't really want to go over 5,000 miles on your service intervals uh, for your motor oil because it starts looking really rough. I've done it in the past just to see, and I won't do it again. I think it's well worth the money to go ahead and change it before then. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. I'm kind of off on a random tangent here, but uh, like I said, I was looking at it this morning, and uh, I added a little bit of um, that uh, Lucas uh, engine break-in additive. It's got a high zinc content. I usually put like a quarter of a bottle in, you know, like every other oil change, or um, it just kind of lubricates like your valves, your rockers, your lifters. All that stuff tends to get the coating built up on it, and it really prevents like wear on the KM and all the other stuff. I mean, you don't really need a lot. It just really helps cut down on the friction between your moving parts. Like, I don't really notice the difference in noise. Granted, I've got roller rockers in here. They really knock down the noise um, for the motor, especially like the top bit noise on startup and all that. And uh, zinc just really 
helps those roller bearings uh, stay lubricated uh, on your initial crank up because you have a barrier in between the metal and metal with the coating. Oh. Not something you necessarily have to do, it's just I ride a lot and so I'm always looking for a little edge on the maintenance or something that'll uh, help prolong the longevity of the motor and the bike. I'm not the guy that's going to come out and wash and polish and clean the bike every day. I'd much rather be out here riding, but I will definitely... The inside of the motor has got to be clean. The, uh, the rest of the bike, in my opinion, is... Eh, you do it when you get around to it. Like I said, my bike stays fairly dirty. But it's, I got a black bike. I don't... This is not like a show bike or anything. This is a, a riding bike. It's fun, but it's made to be ridden. Made to go anywhere and do everything, and if, when you need it, it's got all the power. Like I said I just blew his doors off in six gear, just rolling on the throttle. That's what I really built the bike for. Um, I didn't want to go too big of a motor, and I didn't want to go too much power just to keep the rideability down. Like 200 horsepower on a street bike. And 200 torque, it's sketchy. And I mean, well, you can street it. You know, you got more maintenance, more stuff. So that's like we just gonna shoot for a reasonable, uh, streetable bike. And uh, like I said, I got a lot of. Uh, I don't know if I said it before or not, but I have a lot of lift on this cam. And uh, like I said, it's pushing. It's it's, it's very close to 600 lift. Uh, I've got valve springs in it and. Uh, definitely uh, likes the RPMs. Once you really get up in the RPM range, it really starts picking up power. Yeah, yeah, night day feels good. Like, I'm, it's just a smidge uh, cool. I can get that cool breeze with the wind, but uh, like I said, I just got two hoodies on. I'm not wearing gloves, and uh, I feel great. I like it to be a smidge warmer, like 70s. It, to me, it's like perfect weather. But uh, this is definitely not bad at all. Tiger Creek. I kayak in there a good bit. Go fishing up in there. Uh, on like more of the southern parts, but I'd like to fish some of these like more northern parts too as well. Been kind of working my way up and down that creek and putting it in different spots. It's been kind of too cold during this uh, winter. If you could call it winter, it's been a pretty warm winter. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've just been uh, not really fishing as much during the winter as I normally do. Like in the past, I'll get out here on like I'd go stop at a pond or a lake or whatever, fish for a little bit, eat a sandwich. But I just haven't been waking up early enough to where I can just do all that. Like today I decided I was going to focus on um, seeing if I can get uh, get this little uh, oil leak back uh, dialed in to where I didn't have that or didn't have to think about it. Especially with, uh, we got Daytona coming up and uh, I'd like to go to that. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going or not, but uh, I definitely like to ride to Daytona. It's like 8 or 9 hours, maybe 10 hours. You know, that'd be a good little weekend trip down there. Hang out for the weekend, ride back. So, uh, definitely thinking about it.
it's like as much as I'm not the hugest fan of my exhaust sound on a back road, I do like it on the highway. To me, it, it sounds good on the highway, which is, you know, fairly important. Everybody on a bagger should probably spend the majority of their time on the highway. Um, I spend most of mine on back roads just because of, uh, I get out and I ride in the mornings before I go to work, which, today I just decided to shoot down 95 and, uh, enjoy going down the interstate for a bit. It's definitely a different vibe, like, I mean, I can throw my cruise control on, my bike's set up real well, I can ride no hands, it goes perfectly straight, I lean a little in the corner, and, uh, it'll go right around the corner. Oh, like I said, if, you, if your bike suspension is set up properly, you should be able to do this like with minimal effort. You know, this is how you know you've got your bike set up correctly. But uh, you change your handlebars, you change the suspension, whatever. You should be able to hold your hands up perfectly like this and just steer the bike by shifting your weight. Like, I've got no vibration. Like, it's just perfectly buttery smooth. As I said, you can see my mirrors, my mirrors aren't vibrating, you know, the bike tracks true. I push it a little bit to one way, I lean a little, the bike just falls over that way, real controllable, real slow. I mean, you know, obviously there will be some situations to where you might need to uh, put your hands up there, but uh, yeah, we're, that's just kind of where it is. Old biker over there, wave to him. But yeah, you see, this is how it should be. Most of the time, I don't like having cruise control because I like having the input. But, um, yeah, this is just kind of the way I do it. You know, those may be bikes in that trailer, who knows. somebody on a trailer they're like you can see they like much rather be riding but you know some places especially by up north where it snows you got bad weather you don't really have a lot of options to put the trailer down
to me it's always interesting uh, what's actually on the GPS and what isn't. Um, that was actually my exit, but um, I'm right down here over this bridge. Uh, look at the creek. I seem to be riding a lot down this way. It's not really intentional. It's just kind of where I end up. There's the main north-south uh, rail line. If it goes between New York and Miami on a train, you go right through here. Um, it literally just runs parallel to 95. Um, like I said, it'll branch off at some point. A decent creek. I don't really know if there's any way to get down there and kayak, but uh, I would definitely like to try it at some point. That seems like uh, it'd be a fun creek to try. Might need to like go up a road or whatever. We'll, we'll make this ride up here and see if there's a way to get in there. Be kind of cool to explore that. somewhere to might be a good place to go um, once it warms up kind of like do the half-ass uh, get like some water shoes and just kind of wade wade through it with the kayak push the kayak because you're gonna have to get out and pull it around a good bit and like I said I really can't wait for it to warm up now that I've got a kayak and um, can do stuff like that in the uh, in the uh, what is it, late spring, summer? Alright, so that's gonna be fun. Especially before work. I'll just have to get my car and uh, the kayak all set up where I can do that. Um, it's like, for like a bigger place, it's like I got a mount where I put a little trolling motor and I got a giant tractor battery I stick on the kayak, bolt it all up, and um, I can uh, get around pretty well on it. Obviously, you can paddle, but uh, sometimes it's just nice being able to cross a giant body of water without trying to like paddle, 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 paddle. You get tired pretty quick. So I built a custom trolling motor set up, and um, it was pretty neat. nice new house there's a lot of like you'll see like these nice houses with like a two door two door uh, I mean two car garage um, uh, all modern stuff god damn it did not like they cut the corner it didn't like going in the first. Uh, if you don't rev match first gear a lot, this bike uh, isn't a fan. It really doesn't like you rev matching into first gear. That looks not bad. I think you could get a kayak down there. Oh, they got a little trail on that side. Oh yeah, that'd be the access point right there then. I might try that. That's a good discovery. looks like a fun road. Yeah, we'll just ride this road and see how this works. I right, cut back that way. Get lost for a little bit and see what happens. I don't know this area very well, so getting lost should be fairly simple. Just uh, make a few left and rights. Almost hit the bird. And uh, there we go. Horses. 
I'm a cow person. I, I'm not a huge fan of horses, but uh, I can ride one. But um, I have a. I'm allergic to hair, and uh, horses have a lot of hair, so uh, I generally uh, don't have a very pleasant time uh, riding a horse. Uh, like I said, it's like I learned how to do that growing up, having cows. We didn't have horses, but neighbors and other people we knew did. Like I said, I took horse riding lessons, and uh, I did it. I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, it was like I wasn't able to handle it with the uh, being having an allergy to hair. Like it would just destroy my eyes. Like I have my eyes water up. I can't see good. All red, itchy. Not, not a good time. But uh, I've always gotten along with horses just fine. You know, um, just I just realized that was not going to be my thing growing up. So you, you, know, you don't really know unless you try stuff. I don't got a dog wound up. Eggs for sale. just like general eastern North Carolina countryside right here like you got fields you got like older houses you got newer houses pond you know you can definitely tell that a lot of generations have improved or lived there's some ponies and um, a lot of generations have grown up and come through the place and a lot of the stuff's been taken care of and some of it's just been abandoned Like that used to be like a country store or something. And I don't think I've actually ridden down this way before. So this is all new to me. Um, really just out here enjoying it. Man, it's like there's two door addition. Or a two car, two bay garage. Added on to a double wide. Or a brick double wide. Yeah. I think that's a double wide and they added the brick foundation but like I said there's a lot of double wide manufactured or semi manufactured houses down here um, that was seems to be it's like it's like a good uh, it's like the cheapest way to get um, a building there like in the 80s 90s maybe early 2000s you've seen a lot of people uh, do that Looks like that might be a diesel Ford, the old Ford. Yeah, the old diesels are uh, rare, reliable, and uh, they're generally one of the better trucks you can buy. Is it a four-way stop? No, a two-way stop. Explains a lot. Look left, look right, go left. Look back again. No such thing as looking too many times because uh, I always look at least twice each direction, sometimes three times. You know, I don't trust people. I've seen plenty of people blow through a light and they've had no intention of stopping. And, uh, yeah, it's just something you be aware of. Like, sometimes, uh, especially like late in the day or early in the morning when the sun's like right at the traffic light signal, people just flat out will not see it. Or they'll be on the phone and uh, it doesn't register and they just go right through like it's nothing. But, like, I'm always looking both ways, even if I got the green light. I mean, I'm not 100% religious. Like, I do this every time. But um, a lot of times, I'll slow down and look both ways. Like, the intersection on my way home at night, uh, I always look uh, against the traffic. Even though I know it's a one-way street because I just don't trust people. Uh, cars going the wrong way there before and uh, generally if I see something once on the road uh, if it happened once there it's bound to happen again at some point because uh, a lot of behaviors are uh, induced by road design and um, uh, just like visibility ooh that looks like a country road right there I'm not sure I want to go on that And, uh, I think I could have gone down that 
I don't think that would have been a good call though. That seems like that would have been a uh, that would not have been the uh, appropriate call. does uh that you kind of maneuver your way around zoom in zoom out on the actual like harley gps and then i've got my uh, android auto gps up here as well so whatever i need to i can use the hand controls to control the harley one a little bit easier than i can the google one or the android auto one obviously i use the google one for the directions because it's much simpler to input I can type it in on my phone. The Harley one's just kind of a pain to input, and they don't let you do it while you're moving, and, uh, which is understandable, but at the same time, it's incredibly annoying. Looks like he gets the right away. We came down here the other day. We're just going to take this short leg and then I guess plus the left on 301. At least that's my plan. We'll see how that goes. Okay, we started on uh, 301 there for a second. Got Kind of got off on a tangent looking for uh, fishing spots. But it's just, just kind of how I like ride around in the morning. You know, I just kind of go looking for stuff I haven't seen before trying to find like new roads so i haven't ridden down into this is a johnston county smithfield area like, i'm not familiar with this area at all so riding down through here is like all new to me um and uh, a lot of people it's probably they're like oh i know that road or i know that spot and i'm like yeah this is new to me i like i rode mostly towards like rocky mount goldsboro greenville areas much more familiar that way and also towards raleigh but uh, I've been working my way down this way, just kind of enjoying it. I guess anytime you're in a new spot, you're just kind of like, what's going on here? I don't know what I'm doing. It's like everybody goes, uh, everybody tends to go right through here and I'm going left. I don't even think they're the center. This thing's kind of badly designed because uh, there's no left turn, really. Not really. It's not. It, there's no sign that says uh, you can't turn left or whatnot. But um, it seems to be strongly discouraged. But you know, sometimes you need to turn. Or, like I said, if I went right, it would have inconvenienced me quite a bit stop up here at one of these country stores and get a, a bite to eat maybe I don't know uh, I didn't really plan anything out and I haven't ridden through here a lot I used to work down here at micro for a while and um, not there wasn't really a lot there they built a new school and that seems to like brought some uh, more stuff in um, yeah, I just haven't really ridden through it in a good while, so it'd be nice. Also, they got an um, outdoor store up here, so I might go check that out. That's like one exit up, I think. I think it's before micro actually. Yeah, it's one before, so I'd probably need to look on one of these uh, roads and see. Uh, back to the Harley uh, GPS. I 
I may I may have already passed the one I need, or it may be this next one. see on that map a little bit better. The downside is looking at the screen I'll obviously uh, you don't uh, have as much visibility on uh, looks like maybe that's Pittman Road I need to go on. try that so not this one but the the next right and it goes across a creek so get a two for one look at the water see if you can get into the water there and uh, you know, see what else we got Yeah, we'll, we'll turn up here and see what's going on. I don't think I've ever actually been on this road. If I have, it's been probably over 10 years. I used to come down here some of the time when I was already working here. I get off work, didn't really want to come home. That's a cool van. They got a nice light set up. You can tell when people like take care of this stuff. It looks like an overlanding uh, van or a camping van old mercedes sprinter they got the ac unit on the top they got the trailer looks like an auxiliary fuel tank yeah they got a really nice light set up with the turn signal and stuff that 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 looks cool that makes that trailer really pop out you're not gonna miss that if you do you got bigger problems you know shouldn't miss that one yeah like i said you see you can still see the van lights plus the trailer yeah that's a good setup railroad tracks pond it's probably public private property they got a big old flat over there yeah i'm pretty sure this is the right road might be able to buy us some ammo or at least look around If I want to go in there, I kind of do and don't. Nah, not today. You're not going to get my money today. Let me get back here on 95. Go up to the gas station, hit the Wendy's, or um, might get something else up there. Who knows? We'll get a little bit of food and uh, just see what's going on. Yeah, I'm going behind this truck. I'll let him go. Bikes 
out today. Look like they're going down to Daytona a week early. Generally my assumption, you know. A lot of people make that their big weekend or big uh, vacation trip. Me, I'm probably going to work all night. Ride all, or uh, I'll work all afternoon and night till like midnight or whatever. And then um, I'll probably just ride down and that early in the morning. That'll put me there like 8, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Give me a nap, enjoy the festivities for the first weekend. And uh, just have a generally good time down there. I've got a bunch of buddies that have a house. And they told me I could use the sofa or sleep on the floor or whatever. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm cheap, you know. I don't require a lot when I go down somewhere by myself. And uh, like I said, I try to keep my trip to under 200 bucks. Doesn't always work out, but between 200 and 300, uh, including gas, food, whatever I buy down there, I don't. I'm not a big spender really. Most of my money comes on food and gas. If I can convince myself to uh, drive a little slower, I might be able to get some halfway decent gas mileage. By slower, I mean like 75. But knowing me, we'll run 85 the whole way there. And, uh, you know, half the cars are doing 90 to 100. So whatever the flow of traffic is, is, uh, probably what I'm going to run. I don't really want traffic coming flying up on me. I don't really, uh, want to be flying by traffic either. We're going to go to this 95 to Petro. One of the bigger gas stations on uh, 95 that's not a Bucky's. This was kind of like the, uh, this was like the uh, the gas station you went to before Bucky's existed. Now everybody goes to Bucky's. Which I don't blame them. They got good brisket sandwiches and shit. Busting a U-turn. I'll fuel up here just because. They got gravel on the road too. That's nice. They're doing a lot of construction over here. Glad I didn't come flying in, that would have sucked. Look like they're adding uh, pumps. Slide into this one. Get some gas and uh, we'll be back.